Selena Jaitley, it's so lovely to see you and you're looking absolutely beautiful. <laughs> you're, age, you're like, you're like um, Peter Pan, the ageless. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. That, it's so wonderful to, you know, it's so ironic that we meet uh, at literally my, my debut, if I may call it again. I, we last met at Enigma during Janashi. My God, you have a memory of an elephant. For all of you who are watching or listening, I have a karmic connection with Selena Jaitley when Janasheen, which is her debut film, was being launched. The music launch had this glittering ceremony where the who's who of filmdom and beyond were invited by the late and great Feroz Khasab. And I was the MC in that occasion. And I, I remember Selena on stage looking stellar, a little bit nervous because this was her first uh, big Bollywood outing, but she'd already been a beauty queen. And it's karmic that, you know, this is her, her return to the movies. What a wonderful job you've done. I mean, you've, I, I really feel your best is yet to come. I mean, this is a performance oriented role and you dug your teeth into it. Mm -hmm. um, were you apprehensive when the script first came to you or was it an instinctive yes? You know, uh, Rishikesh, there was no, um, I, I did not want to come back to films, to tell you the truth. And uh, in 2012, I was sort of uh, at a point where I was really exhausted uh, because I had been in, front, in the limelight since the age of 15. And then um, following that, I, I was just, uh, you know, exhausted doing roles which really never gave me an opportunity to... Uh, tap the actor within me and nobody was willing to give the actor within me a chance. And I reached a point where I said, you know, Kuch maza nahi aara. you know, I don't want to do this anymore. So when I met uh, my husband, Peter, I just decided I'm going to now really, really enjoy another season of my life. You know, I moved abroad, we lived in different countries all over the world. It's been wonderful. I started working with United Nations. I started, you know, I, I uh, started full, full time devoting all my energies towards the UN working for the free and equal campaign. Uh, I, I started uh, devoting myself to music and writing and of course was blessed with kids also. Now during this entire time, my mom uh, was the only person who was not very happy with me and she was constantly telling me that you know, every human being should live to their maximum potential. And uh, mom just kept telling me, why are you not doing films? You're getting good offers. At least do one film a year, do one film every two years. And I would just not listen to my mom. Um, last year when I tragically lost both my parents, it was a, uh, one of the last conversations which I had with my mom was that she wanted me to come back to films. I remember she was a bit delirious and she said, uh, why aren't you, uh, aren't you getting late for shooting? And this was literally the last same conversation I had with my mom before she passed away. Um, it remained with me after her passing. Um, uh, and um, uh, that's when I met Ram. Ram is a dear friend before he, he is a journalist or a writer or a director. And we met in Dubai. And then he said, Selena, I have a, a beautiful script. Um, it's about, uh, you know, of course, it is about some very passionate things that you, you deeply believe in. So that's how the film happened. I made a comeback to fulfill my mother's last wish, basically. The reason has got to be strong enough. I remember asking Madhuri this. I said, and this could easily be so true for you. I said, handsome husband, life abroad, two lovely kids, in your case, three, and you still come back. And she said, you know, Rishi, once an actress, always an actress. You have a, a calling within you. Apart from the, you know, the God bless her soul, your, your wonderful mothers egging you on, was there also a calling deep down inside saying that, you know, I'm an actress. This is what I do. Yeah, the calling was always there. But, you know, uh, I had a fear, Rishi. I had a fear. And that fear was people not, you know, it was very difficult for me to, uh, in my first thing, to break the barrier of being the beauty queen or the Miss yeah. Universe runner-up or the Miss India or a girl who came from a modeling background, you know. So 
for me before i would uh, every time i would really have to sit and convince people that don't give me this give me that because i would rather do this because i know that you know i have great potential as an actor please tap it you know and and nobody wanted to do that and that i got really upset because of that and this was the only fear which kept me back that's the reason i did not want to come back because you know i just didn't want to do stuff which seemed to me mindless i'm not saying anything that i've done is mindless no not at all i did some great fun films like no entry and gold mal returns and apna sapna mani mani but you know even though my i pride myself on my comic timing and i pride myself on how i feel about comedy for example that's a genre i feel very strongly about and um, um, i come from a family where everybody has a great sense of humor and we grew up with all that so i was just saddened by the fact that nobody was willing to see beyond the way i looked you know and while season's greetings ram kamal um said okay you look how you look this is this xyz but i want people to see ramita and this is how we're going to do it and ram and i worked from the day ram narrated the subject to me from you know how which nose spin to wear to how do i look okay so we have sat and smoked literally a carton of cigarettes to to look like a girl who's been smoking all her life because i had to smoke on screen yeah. <laughs> i did not want to splutter or have a distaste you know you can make out the way someone holds a cigarette to see yeah. if if the person is a smoker or not a smoker and, and that is something audience can catch you like that the camera will catch you even if no one else catches you the camera will we did everything we did everything i brushed up on my bengali i um brushed up on my so smoking god forbid that's the worst thing i did for this film was that and um, of course also being intimate with somebody else other than my husband was also a little weird for me <laughs> but you know it made sense in the film it made sense for my character it made sense everything made sense and i really thankful to ram that despite the way he presented me or, or or he didn't do anything to ruin the way i looked or ruin the way uh, ramita should be not i looked how ramita should be and he still managed to uh, that people only all the critics have praised the performances and you liked it too so that means a lot to me <laughs> i loved it i mean and the fact that you you're glamorous you can't change the way you look i mean it's a it's a god gift and why should you but i just wish people could have looked beyond your obvious good looks uh, to give you meaty parts like this but you know what they say in hindustani dera hai durust hai so uh, no hard feelings on that i'm really surprised i thought you were a punjabi kudi your bong just rolled so easily out of out of your tongue or is it the foggy job that uh, did it also take you to the east eastern part of india or Uh, tell, tell me about that, about Bengali culture and and assimilating that. You know, being an infantry officer's daughter, daughter, it, and I, I am fourth generation armed forces, literally, with my brother being in uh, SF in the he's a paratrooper. So for me, uh, I never knew a place that I could call home. My grandparents also they settled down in Lucknow, but that was my grandfather's last post. And we are not really from. Lucknow be actually from the northwest frontier province and ever since partition everybody was in the army they kept moving around and whichever was the last posting most of the people in my family settled down wherever they were posted last so um, my father while he is um, he is a, a peshawari uh, hindu pathan my my mom is of afghan descent she's in afghan christian descent so i i was uh, i'm a very mixed uh, person but the place that i found um culturally myself being drawn culturally and extremely rooted to language wise in every other way probably because i stayed in um, kolkata for a long period of time so i sort of adopted it as my culture i speak the language i eat the food my all my friends uh, most of my friends are from bengal i speak bengali and that's also sort of a secret language between me and my sons though they laugh at me every time i speak to them because they're german speaking little brats but still you know um and so that was that now having said that um my father's uh, being in the infantry 
gave, gave me the opportunity to grow up in some of the most beautiful parts of India. I lived in Tawang, which is Arunachal Pradesh. Yep. We were in Aizol, which is in Mizoram. We were in uh, Nagaland. We were in Bhutan. We were in Rani Khet, which is in Uttarakhand right now. So I had the wonderful opportunity to grow up in these beautiful places, which had no access to what the heck was happening in the rest of the country. Two video cassettes used to come every month from the dark wala, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and those two video cassettes, we, me and my brother used to watch. Every time mom and dad went for an army party, which was always every day, we used to watch it on repeat till the next slot came the next month. You know? <laughs> so that was our life and it was so blessed and it played such an important role in us being um, able to adjust in almost any situation and anywhere and be thankful for whatever we have. Which is why you look at PC, you look at Gul, you look at Nimrat Kaur, even more recently, you know, people like Rakulpreet, you forgy girls can just assimilate into any culture. You feel that's one of the reasons why Peter and yourself, your husband and yourself get along so well, because having been a forgy kid, you've just been able to easily slip in and out of cultures mm -hmm. at will. Hmm? There's one more secret to that usually. Peter's also a former military. So. <laughs> wow. So the first picture amazing. I saw of Peter was in his uniform and I was like, oh my God, this is like Top Gun coming to life. And I am so done. I told my brother, listen, I am so going. <laughs> my brother was the first one to know. He was, he was in the valley, poor thing, with a big beard that time. <laughs> In the middle of a mission, I called him. I said, listen, I have fallen in love and he's a forgy from another country. I am so leaving. I am going and marrying him. You convince mom and dad. He's like, I'm already on a mission. You want me to send, to the, send me to the tiger? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Pira was with the Austrian army or the German army? The Austrian army. army. But then we, of course, uh, you know, moved on and uh, became a hotelier and uh, started his journey in the corporate world where he has finally found his roots and he enjoys it very much. <laughs> uh, you know, there's no disrespect to Americans and Canadians, but I find that Europeans are a lot more open culturally uh, than the rest of the world. How did he take to all your intimate scenes with Azhar? Has he watched them but has he passed comment on them? <laughs> He knows I did it, but he hasn't seen it. He said, listen, I'm not going to see that scene. I know whatever you're doing, you, you... I have the freedom to do what I want, as long as it is within the boundaries of not, you know, interfering with, uh, you know, intimacy also has to be of a certain level, and it really has to be, um, you know, not something disrespectful. Yeah. There's a very thin line between um, being sensual and being the... Uh, slutty, if I may use the word. Yep, yep, yep. You know, and this had to be done. Um, and see, Ram understood that. I had even at that time just delivered. To tell you the truth, I was still breastfeeding wow. my little one, so it was not really easy to <laughs> do this. But uh, it, it went well. Azar was. Uh, I was very blessed to have a co-star like Azar. He is a thorough gentleman and a boy with great etiquette which which is um, very rare to find amongst newcomers who come and you know just are willing to do uh, you know go all the way for everything so uh, they generally don't consider the, the the lines that should not be crossed and that i think was very kind of us to do that and um, it worked out all well and we also had an intimacy supervisor on the sets, which was the first initiate of its kind initiated by wow. Raka. And I think it was so brilliant. I'll tell you why. Because um, uh, the day I landed, we had a couple of workshops uh, for the film. Following that, Ram tells me that Serena, the intimacy supervisor, Manisha Basu, would be coming. And I'm like, huh? I didn't understand. I thought maybe there's something to do. Maybe she's a choreographer who will tell me how to. It never struck me by intimacy supervisor. It means there was somebody actually created. A position has been created within the organization wow. to have someone be there and tell me, Selena, look, uh, everything's going to work exactly the way you want it. Should you feel uncomfortable by anyone? watching on because on the set there are 20 people when a scene like this is being shot there are lightmen there are cameramen there are there are ad's there 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 are set people they have to be there you know and so, so she was like 
if you're uncomfortable with anything at any moment, these are the sign language we will use. We will stop the shooting there and then without creating a scene. And I can come and we both can have a conversation and I can be your mediator and discuss it with anyone that you have an issue with. And therefore, you be free to perform as an artist without worrying about any, any untoward. Wow. Stuff. That is so but beautiful. It gave me so much liberty you know, to just perform, to just be there as an artist, to be there in the moment, to, to do what Ramita would be doing with Usman, with whom she's lived in for so many years in another country together. So as an actor, it gave me a lot of freedom to just be me without being violated on any level by anyone's looks or touch or whatever you want to call it. You know, you know the movie also caused me to think, uh, you know, my, my dad's 76, my mother's 72. Uh, and I said, what is my perception of my mother? Is that the reality or is it just my perception? And that's what this film talks about, isn't it? I mean, and you must have questioned that yourself when you're playing Romita, saying, you know, how well did I know my mother? I mean, I perceived my mother in a particular way, but was she really like that? And how much did the script speak to you at that level, the mother-daughter relationship? Honestly, to tell you the truth, you're so right. It, it did make me think. I, I literally was going into flashbacks every time I would read the script and the aspect of when I question, when I take for granted that, you know, my mother will get back together with my father and everything will be fine. And I say this to Usman, yeah. you know, we take, uh, while we consider ourselves to be so emancipated and so open-minded and all the you know, the, the next gen and people who understand, you know, the world, when it comes to our own parents, we have these very strange expectations of our parents yeah, yeah. about how they want to conduct their life or they want their life to be the we centric and when we will visit you, when this will happen. We never once ask them that what is it that you want? You know, like one of the conversations I had with my mom in the hospital um, uh, was, I, you know, I was trying to cheer her up and I, I asked her, mom, what is the first thing that you want to do when we get out of here? You know, she said, I want to color my hair red. And, you know, I never, I was always the one who took it for granted that mom is a certain way and, you know, she likes this and this is what I should get her when I am going shopping for her or which when I, when we, this is what we should do. I never once asked her, what is it that you would like to do, you know? And it really, this, you're right. It really did make me think that how much we take our uh, parents for granted. Yeah. Why is it that uh, one of your kids has a Western name and one an Indian name? Uh, you know, I find it very peculiar. Was that a trade-off between Peter and yourself or it just came that way? <laughs> no, actually, initially we were wanting to name them Wilbur and Orville after the Wright brothers. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, we were planning. It's to name well. them. Yeah, <laughs> so we were, it's, it's really ironic. They are so obsessed with planes from the, I think the first word was airplane. <laughs> if I remember. <laughs> So, uh, Peter and I were very this, and even in their nursery, there was a W and an O and Wilbur and Orville. But the day they were born, um, Peter and I looked at each other and I said, we are two people coming together from two different cultures, yep. you know. And what legacy are we giving our sons? Will they, will they hold that within them? And that's when Peter and I decided, no, let's not do Wilbur and Orville. Let's do something which is a coming together of both our cultures. Yes. So I chose Winston was my choice and Viraj was Peter's choice because he loved the name Viraj. That's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just curious to know why you stopped at 43 minutes. I mean, this could have flowed, gone even beyond. Did you, did you have conversations with your director? Because, you know, you left us at a point where we were aching for more. But then you could argue, Selena, that if you went on, maybe we wouldn't have ached for more. But the length of it, was that totally Ram's decision? Or did you ever have a discussion with him on it? No, it was totally Ram's uh, decision. And I agreed with him because, uh, see, we have to, um, our, one of our main uh, goals, uh, reasons for making this film was that it was a tribute to Rick Yeah. 
is a very different style of filmmaking and storytelling. And we wanted it to be the same uh, style and we wanted it to be, you know, some stories uh, just like his life came to an, it is basically wherein Ram and me are concerned after all our discussions, I came to the conclusion that just like his life abruptly ended, the story was yet to be told. The film also had to abruptly end like his life. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So some stories, they, they do not have an ending or leave every audience to imagine that what could the story be? And it is really amazing that you say this because um, most of the film critics said exactly the same thing. They said, you know, really left us when wondering what happened later. Yep. I wish it was longer. But the whole idea was that just like Rituda's legacy came to an abrupt end with his untimely device, uh, sorry, demise, <laughs> um, uh, this film also had to end abruptly at a high point uh, so that we leave it to different mental, um, uh, you know, uh, con uh, we leave it to different endings in people's minds and hearts. I, I have so much admiration for you because the one thing that you've stuck by is the cause that you support and you've done it through the years if not the decade it's not one oh let's do one appearance for lgbtq and it's all all right let's do one parade and it's all right you've really stuck to your guns you walk the talk every single day whether it's on social media or otherwise and i have even more regard that you have a film now in which there's a trans actress how lovely is this please tell us about her so our film is, of course, one of the first films to get a, a trans woman casted in a trans role in mainstream cinema. And um, I really wanted to do a film which was LGBTQIA centric, but uh, I had to wait a long time because I definitely did not want to be a part of the stereotypical portrayals of the LGBT. Yeah. And that was as, as an activist, it was very important for me because, um, you know, as, as a woman, I understand, when I see a trans woman, as a woman, I understand what the battle she had to go through her whole life to be where she is today. So it is very important to me how trans people are portrayed. It is very important to me how LGBT people are portrayed. And it is very important to me that not to, um, uh, uh, you know, sectionalize them to be uh, like different from you and me. They experience the same emotions. They are one of our taxpayers. Each one has their own identity. Each one has their own talent. And it was very important for me to be a part of cinema, which is progressive towards portrayal of the LGBT. And um, for that, I give Ram Kamal 100 points because he, 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 said, he said, when we talk about sex between two grown, two, uh, two, uh, two, uh, um, uh, when we talk about sex between two individuals, do we uh, always talk from the point of view of, uh, you know, sex in the same way it is between two homosexual individuals or same sex individuals for the simple reason that uh, sex is a basic need of every relationship of every human being. Why should it be differentiated just because somebody's uh, gender orientation is completely different? Correct. Um uh, I, I, I look at your life, a lot of people would say, wow, you know, beautiful girl, beauty queen, you know, actress, now married successfully and this and that. But uh, you've been through your fair share of pain and loss. And I can't even under uh, understand the kind of loss that you've, you've been through. And you've actually gone on record to say that you went through a very, very rough phase. And you've come out of that rough phase now, but you could argue that these are battles that we have to keep fighting through our life. So uh, as far as your, your phase of depression is concerned, is that over and done with, or are you still battling it uh, like a lot of us are through, through, through your daily life? I could say I'm just better, Rishi. I, I, it, it, I'm not over it completely. It is a, uh, an, I no longer ca call it a battle. It is overcoming my weaker self every day. Wow. And um, um, when I when I call it this way, it give it it also tells me the fact that I can overcome my weaker weaker self and just uh, facilitate and encourage the stronger self to be the dominant one. You know, 
and uh, it's not been easy uh, losing a child losing your parents all at the same time it can hit you and a lot of people uh, friends even that i turn to would say oh you have everything what is your problem forget this depression and all that jazz you know this is the only thing on your show because you have such so many followers and if anyone is feeling low within themselves you know uh, you don't need to be guilty just because you have everything going in your life it's 14 hours apologies for that um, just because you have everything going on in your life well that doesn't mean that uh, nothing can go wrong inside of you depression is a chemical imbalance within your body and we need to get treatment for it we need to have support for it and we must do whatever we can to keep lifting ourselves up from that and if that means getting support from the right person the right organization the right doctor medical individual or counseling we must go for it that's an interesting point you see because the west took to counselors and psychiatrists very easily you always went on the psychiatrist's couch and you talked. Whereas in India, you've always been told not to do that. You've always been told it's your problems, you deal with it with your family or you do it yourself. meditate karo, which is all good. It's great to meditate, great to do yoga. But you are convinced that the professional has to come in here. The yoga, the meditation can happen, but the reach for professional. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, see, meditation is brilliant and one thing which really ex helped me was exercising. But all these are complementary to the treatment that you're getting. These are complementary treatments to the main treatment that you are getting or the main support by just counseling, just go for counseling. And there is a big, big difference between psychiatric care and psychological counseling. So please yeah. I want people to know, don't confuse the two. Psychiatric care is for mental disorders. Okay, depression is not a severely decap. Yes, there are different levels of uh, depression. So it depends on what uh, le level do you suffer from. But definitely going for some psychological, speaking to an expert who can psychologically counsel you is very, very important. And even sometimes give you medications to feel better is very, very important. I was on medications only for a month, to tell you the truth, because I felt uh, with complimentary, complimentary therapy of uh, exercising and and uh, meditation and of course the love and support of my husband and my children but um, having and and uh, coming back to work but having said that uh, all the other things work in complementary uh, uh, healing you know you cannot just survive on one thing it has to be a combined effort of various things to get you back you have to see what works for you you know as a fan of yours and somebody who's connected to you I'm just really happy that more people are watching. There's no disrespect to everybody that's going through COVID-19 and the coronavirus, but a lot more people are at home to be able to watch Seasons Greetings. Yeah. But the irony of it is that, you know, A, it's released at such a time where people are watching it. More and more people are watching it. But also we're nowhere cl close to getting back to the shooting floor because of the troubled times that we live in. Are you using this time to, to read a lot of scripts? Are scripts being sent to you? OTT is a wonderful world. You know, your shows on Z5, the Amazons and the Netflixes and the old Balajis. I'm sure they're all coming to you now because they know that Selena wants to work. Yes. Um, um, I think Netflix and all are reserved only for the bigger stars. <laughs> Don't say that. No. But um, um, my job is to do my work right. And hopefully the ones who believe in come forward with the right work. My... Um, I will. I have started to work and I will continue to work and I just want to do good work. I want to work with people like Ram Kamal. I want to work with people who have great passion for cinema like I do and uh, who are also have the respect for the artists within me as well. And uh, yes, I'm looking at a couple of scripts, but uh, I don't want to, you know, churn out films or web series by the dozen. I want to do something nice and memorable once a year. Uh, so, so as when I look back, this because this is just something for me. Yeah. You know, it is for my growth. It is for my ability to reach its maximum potential. So, it is now very important for me to look at work 
which means something to me as an actor and uh, which makes also my audience my my loyal fans who stood by me for so many years uh, to be proud of me and i i i swear it has been such a blessed experience even having fans who stood by the years that i have not done work and every day sent messages and every day sent love and or making all special occasions important it, it it makes you feel that yes i have been doing something right so i owe it to them and i owe it to my mother's memory to do good work and blessed work and i you know people talk about lilak dube and her theatrical expertise and the veteran of the stage but you were you know a tucker ki actress uh, <laughs> i know i know you're a modest person you will still give respect and recognition to lilak's seniority and expertise but not for a moment did you look like the less experienced actress because your scenes with her were just so equal and so vibrant so really good on you i think that's spectacular but i think good actors bring that out in you don't they when you're standing in front of them a lot of workshops together so um i learned a lot from the lady she taught me a lot during the workshops i i got to have a lot of insights into holding my emotions and because i was a wreck at that time when i was shooting i was in the throes of my um, uh, depression at that point so you let g um, along with ram kamal really really helped me control that and i'm so glad that ram Uh, did these workshops and uh, i was able to do a lot <laughs> so before we sign off how are you handling the uh, the covid 19 situation i see you have a lovely garden where the yes. children and you can go and i see wonderful flowers that yes. you know peter and you have in your garden but you know is it easy to get vegetables and essentials in austria and are you able to sanitize them and use them for the house uh, how are things there you know um, we live very high up on the alps so we have an access to a lot of farmers in our area so a lot of them just drop stuff off, off like that and we can call them and they drop drop off fresh dairy and cheeses um, um all the grocery big grocery stores are open for a few hours a day so people are allowed to go there and shop so luckily by god's grace we did not have a shortage of supplies of anything and my husband being an expert in crisis management he at the beginning of january itself you know stocked up the pantry with all the non food and you know so that was good for us and i was like what's wrong with you you're going in your <laughs> kya kar rahe ho you know and he was like you will see you will see this is i'm not liking what is happening in um, china you know so it was it was true within a week the world started shutting down and uh, things started run the perish uh, the non perishable started running out the oils the the toilet papers the the diapers the wipes and we, and and peter was like now just go down to the pantry and have a look we have everything that we need it's only the perishable that we need and one good man <laughs> that's i see why you married him <laughs> amongst amongst other things like the military experience and things like that that's so exactly. <laughs> so what have you cooked for the family off late are, are you uh, you know for the kids and him they love uh, puri my ah. kids so they love having puri and aloo so that that's one thing i i, I love making for them easy to please <laughs> you know once in a while festival food because uh, overseas it's not easy to do the atta and everything though i love to cook it's a hobby of mine i love cooking but i i i like to do fast uh, snacks and things the like healthy snacks for the kids but nowadays in the lockdown i've been treating them a lot to their halwas and puris because i have the time to cook but i never imagine i'll be also promoting a film in the middle of a global yeah. lockdown so <laughs> that also is there How's the homework and school are going? Are they homeschooling with uh, on the internet? Hmm. All, all is homeschooling, and the teachers also come online, and they have beautiful teachers also once a week. Uh, they have sort of a Viva class, and uh, where the teacher asks them to do a present. They have to do a presentation every week on one subject given by the teacher, so that they they are fine. They just. <laughs> 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 Selena Jetty Hard your lovely god bless you thank you for a, a wonderful cinematic experience seasons greetings i want to see you back at the movies whatever you do you know mm -hmm. just come back here's rishi and i look forward to having your review on your uh, instagram we of course a project to have your esteemed review as well <laughs> of course take care of yourself god bless okay. you cheers god bless you bye bye